In your various roles in the workplace, many of you are going to have the opportunity to delegate. On several of our events at DJ Learning, we give you the opportunity to explore the skill of delegation. For many, it's a key leadership skill. For many, your colleagues perhaps you see around the workplace, it's a skill that's demonstrated very effectively. Uh, for others, you'll see it as a skill that's demonstrated perhaps not quite as well as it might be. We'll explore the key steps in the delegation process. What that might mean to you as a delegatee, so somebody delegating work to you, and what that might mean for you as a delegator, so you're delegating work to somebody else. We'll explore areas like the importance of delegating to the right people, uh, the importance of having excellent working relationships that you have to have in place before you can delegate to anybody. You have to be able to trust your colleagues and support their development. And in particular, you're best not to feel threatened by the fact that you're giving work to somebody else. You ought to empower their skills, empower what they can do to contribute to what you're doing and perhaps what your team is doing. People that I've worked with, when they try to delegate to the right people, they delegate for a range of reasons. In the end though, there is one common goal, that if you delegate, you must make sure that you're going to meet the key stakeholder expectations. Key stakeholders in this case are going to be you as delegator, the recipient of what, you, what you've allocated, the delegatee, and who you're responsible to, could be line management. It means you're going to have the potential to do more than you could do on your own. It also means it says a lot about you when you're delegating because you need to make sure that your delegator is fully trained, has the skills and competencies that they need to work with you, and you also need to remember that as delegator, you retain ultimate responsibility for that piece of work or that task. There is absolutely no get out of jail free clause uh, with any of that. If you're a delegator, the buck stops at your front doorstep. That is exactly the way and rightly the way that it should be. So Oliver and I are going to share with you now some examples of uh, delegation from our various backgrounds. So, Oliver. So, my example is when I took responsibility for a new group of, um, a new group of people in a department that I wasn't hugely familiar with, but I was getting more and more familiar with at the time. And whilst, again, in tune with the theme, I was ultimately responsible, I did delegate some of the changes that I wanted to make to the people who, who ran that team. So whilst responsibility lied with me, I, I did accept that they knew more about what the team did at that stage than what I did. So that's uh, an example that Oliver shared with us from when he uh, was in working for a big organisation in the, in the media sector. An example I'll share with you also reveals a little bit about my natural leadership style as well because when you are leading uh, a group of people and you're working with big numbers uh, of people um, accepting fully that ultimate responsibility uh, rests in this case with me you have dependency you have a great deal of dependency on those people that work closely with you. And I'm thinking now of my team of managers that worked with me and the team leaders who worked directly for them but then one step below on the, on the organisational hierarchy through to me. So there's big bands of responsibility all come through to land at my desk, which is fine because you accept that at that level of, um, uh, of role. There are several examples uh, I can share with you where I delegated tasks and responsibilities to managers and team leaders on areas that I knew very, very little about. I learnt very quickly because part of the role of a delegator is to regularly check and monitor uh, and question and to challenge work that comes back to you just to make sure that everybody is where they need to be with any uh, delegated task. Also though, there were people in my management team and in my team leader team 
that knew more about particular areas than I did, and in one or two cases a lot more uh, than I did. And as a leader, or to any of you as delegators, how do you react to that? There's some people that I know would feel really threatened if they had line management responsibility for somebody who knew more about something than they did. To a point, I can understand that reaction, but in the examples I'm thinking about now, I actually welcomed it because it meant we could get a particular set of tasks done. I didn't have to worry about them because these people I'm thinking about now were passionate about what they did in an area that I was really delighted that they had that passion because I could concentrate on other things. So that's a very different type of delegation scenario where you just look to embrace the skills and competencies uh, of those around you, so your delegatees. At our events, we will give you this chance to think about your role as delegatee, delegator, what your skill sets are and could be in both roles, so you go back to your place of work knowing much more about the delegation process no matter what role that you end up playing or sometimes both at the same time. So, take the chance please to have a look at our website www.djlearning.co.uk find a little bit more about what we get up to and we really look forward to working with you and your organisations in the near future. Thank you very much.